Joining us right now is Jonathan Lord. He's a senior fellow and the director of the Middle East Security Program at the Center for a New American Security. It's good to see you, Jonathan. Thanks for coming in. We've just heard from the uh, chief of staff for the IDF saying that they are now, the Israeli military is now in very significant areas of Gaza City. That's the latest coming in. And you make an interesting comparison um, to what people thought would happen with the ground operation and what is actually happening. Flicking on a light switch when actually it's a dimmer switch. What are you hearing that they're, why are you hearing they're doing it that way? Uh, well, that's right, Kate, thanks very much. Um, there are a few reasons that the IDF is operating in this very deliberate, steady, gradual way. For one, operationally, it makes a lot of sense. They're moving very deliberately to clear territory uh, along the lines of a counterinsurgency campaign, whereas in the past we might have seen more CT counterterrorism attempts to take out terrorist networks to stop and de debilitate uh, terrorist activity. They're seeking to displace Hamas wholly throughout the Gaza Strip, and so they're going to move and hold territory as they go. Uh, additionally, um, when it comes to the issue of concerns about escalation, uh, by moving in this way versus, you know, almost like the IDF sergeant blowing a whistle and thousands of troops come out over the top, um, doing it this way makes it harder for Israel's adversaries to identify a specific decision point at which they feel politically pressed to make a decision to escalate themselves in a very meaningful way. So by doing it uh, in a deliberate way, they're actually injecting more uncertainty into Iranian-backed proxies' decision-making. And very finally, uh, when it comes to the issue of hostage negotiations, uh, it seems that Hamas is using dribs and drabs of hostage releases to try to forestall Israel's advance. Uh, Israel can counter that by deliberately and slowly building up the pressure, moving in step by step to put counter pressure on Hamas to release more hostages as they go. I was actually going to ask you about the, about the circumstances around the hostages. 242 hostages still 27 days into this war, still being held, we believed, in Gaza by Hamas. How do you think Hamas is, tr what they're trying to do, how they're trying to use the hostages in these, if we want to call them negotiations, and how does that impact Israel's approach to this ground operation? Yeah, well, it's, it's very clear that Hamas is using uh, these hostages to try to restrain uh, Israel's action, to keep them out of Gaza, Gaza City, uh, and to ultimately, hopefully permanently, forestall Israel's in-ground incursion and to keep themselves in power in Gaza. Uh, in the meantime, they're using social media and a lot of images of civilian casualties to try to press the international community uh, and individuals uh, to, to, to press Israel into a premature ceasefire. Uh, that's their game. Uh, and for Israel's part, uh, they do largely assess um, that that's what they're trying to do. Uh, it was reported that uh, Israeli Mossad, the intelligence chief, uh, David Barnea, was in Qatar getting briefed on these negotiations. Um, and in part, Israel is moving very deliberately to try to press Hamas into releasing more people. I want to ask you, you were talking about the fear of escalation, the concern. Tomorrow we are going to hear from the head of Hezbollah, and he's going to be making his first public speech since the start of this war. What is your sense on the calculation for escalation by Hezbollah? If Hezbollah goes in, does that effectively mean that the United States will be in another war in the Middle East? That remains unclear. Uh, it's also unclear what uh, Hassan Nasrallah may say in his speech tomorrow. I imagine it will be loud and blustery and demonstrate immense solidarity with Hamas. But thus far, the level of activity we've seen on the northern border indicates to me that Hezbollah wants to do just enough to demonstrate solidarity with Hamas without actually getting themselves embroiled in a war. Hezbollah has a lot to lose here. Um, Lebanon is in a, a total state of chaos. It's functionally a failed state, and uh, Hezbollah has a lot to do with that. And the one good thing that in recent months that has happened in, uh, Hezbollah, in, in Lebanon is uh, the offshore gas deal. Um, Hezbollah had an option to try to scuttle that uh, or take some credit for it, and they chose the latter. They understand they're going to be held responsible if Lebanon uh, goes through a terrible war as a result of their actions. It's great to have you on with your expertise on this, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you, Kate.